Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I am painting on a vinyl record. I'm going to make a clock. Now this clock, I'm going to do it in the colors of West Virginia University, which is blue and gold. And I live in West Virginia. I'm not a particular football fan, but if you live in West Virginia, blue and gold is like your colors and everybody's crazy about them. So I'm going to be making a clock in those colors for an upcoming festival that I have. And blue and yellow, obviously you don't want them to mix. So I'm going to be using a split cup and I've mixed them with glue and water instead of the normal Floetrol because uh, glue, it's not quite as reactive as Floetrol. And so you can achieve more like, uh, clean layers, I guess, with it. So between the split cup and the glue and water, I'm hoping for not a lot of cell reaction, just some nice uh, crisp lines. So I have some white. All my paint is mixed to a medium, medium to medium thin. It's not really thin. The white is might be the thinnest of them all. Uh, my metallics, those all look a bit thicker. You see how it looks really thick, but then when you do it, it it pours off very nicely. So the two metallics might be slightly thicker than the other colors, but I have a phthalo blue and a metallic blue. I have, uh, I think, primary yellow and a metallic gold. So there's two shades for each color and then some white to kind of separate them. And I've got it on my spinner because I'm going to be spinning to stretch, and I might also do some spinning as I pour out the ring pour, which is what I'm going to be doing. We'll see. But I think that's all the details. Let's make a painting. So I started by priming my record just so that it starts out as a nice white base. Um, and I put tape on the back of the hole to help the paint not all fall through when I, you know, pick it up to let it um, dry. And I am taping it to my spinner so that as I spin, it doesn't shoot off the side. Okay, you don't need a whole lot of tape. You just need something to kind of grip the bottom so that as you spin, it's not like... All right, for my split cup, I've thought so much about how I'm gonna put the colors in here. Because in a split cup, the ones on the sides, those are actually your most prominent colors, it seems. And those are the ones that are always crossing at, like right next to each other. So even though it looks like they're far apart on the split cup, as you pour them out, they actually get layered right next to each other. So I don't want my blue tube paint and my yellow tube paint to be on the outside edges because when they cross, it might make some green. Metallic blue and metallic gold, however, because of the difference in metallic pigments, they don't blend quite as much when they overlap. So I'm going to put the metallics on the outsides and then the coordinating paint color and then white in the middle just to kind of hold the two sides separate. So let's start with the white. Wonderful. This looks great. So I'm going to be doing a ring pour in the middle. I don't think I'm going to be changing directions. I think I may, based on how the colors are flowing out, I may spin it either this way or this way to try to get kind of a spiraling pattern because, because of how the colors lay out, you will get more yellow on one side and more blue on the other side of, of the painting. And so if I spin it slowly while I do it. Hopefully I'll get kind of a spiral. All right. Detailed ring pours are always a little bit scary for me because I have a tremor in my hand and uh, so it can be hard to to get all the lines really crisp, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, beginning is not quite as important. Just gonna get it going. There we go.
my paint might be a little bit thick here. It's kind of blobbing out. I'm just going to stop it for a second because my hands are shaking and uh, the paint is blobbing. And it is a lot harder to do a controlled single hand while spinning with your other hand. It's hard for me. So I'm just, let me give this a torch and then I'm going to start again and see, see if I can make it work a little better. Okay. Let me see if I can just start as one handed. Whew. Right there towards the center as the paint was flowing out more slowly, I was able to get a clean circle. So I just decided instead of pouring every single bit of paint out, I just stop while I had a nice clean center. I will take the paint I have here and just pour it out around the edge. Well, it looks like there's not a whole lot left. Just to help cover. And then I will put some of this white around the edge because that will spin off and make the canvas wet and help pull off some of the other paint. My center is not quite centered. It's hard to find the exact center, isn't it? <laughs> the way I'm looking for the center is I'm kind of looking at a point and then spinning it gently. And as I spin, I see, does that point move around or does it pretty much stay put? It seems like it's pretty much staying put. Let me torch this and then we'll spin it to stretch it. Well, that's actually really cool. I got so many speckles. I thought my paints were relatively bubble free. I don't know whether pouring it out in that sort of blobby way made them have more air in the mix. Um, but everywhere these bubbles have popped, it's like little yellow speckles, which is actually really cool, especially considering that this isn't a really neat ring pour anyway. So having some speckles just makes it more interesting. Right here in the middle, I'm going to do just a little finger. 
It's like a fingertip kiss, you know, like a balloon kiss, but just with one fingertip. Sort of draw it to a point. Even though that will be where the clock mechanism comes out, you just want it to look nice. All right, let's give this a gentle spin, start to stretch it. Well, I definitely didn't need to worry about there being too much paint on this canvas. It's looking really pretty. I do have some yellow and blue blending into green. My yellow must have been a little bit at either either a thinner consistency of paint or just denser paint color because it is disappearing a bit into the blue. Um, I don't want to lose, like, my yellow is brightest out here. I feel like I need to spin it more to get some of the the bulk of the paint off. It is a really cool kind of spiraling inwards, so. Do a little bit harder. Very cool. Okay, so it feels off-center because we've got like blue here, like a larger section of blue here and a smaller section there, but the center is in the center, which is what's important. I don't actually like that little fingertip kiss that I did in the middle. I'm gonna blend it into some more lines just in case I missed the exact point. Oh, but I like that. I'm really happy with this. There's a lot less white showing up and there is a lot more green than I wanted, but it's definitely the blue and gold colors and I like it a lot. So I'm going to torch it one more time and then I'll give you a close up. Close up time. Okay, well this is a far cry from the really clean layers that I was hoping to get, but these blobs actually make a really cool effect. It's almost like stained glass or something. It's not quite as pronounced an effect as I think I would have gotten if I had used Floetrol, so I do think that using glue in the mixture was good for this, because it did still help keep those layers crisp, even though they came out as blobs instead of smooth rings. Here in the middle it's a little bit more of a ring, so that's good. And I do really like the way the yellow moves in that spiral pattern, so I'm I'm glad, even though it was harder, I'm glad that I did spin the uh, the spinner a little bit as I poured it out, because I think that makes it much more dynamic. And then look at those tiny little speckles. Normally people are like, oh no, air bubbles, my painting has the measles. But I find it's actually kind of cool. I think it adds even more interest to a painting, so I don't mind here. All right, let me show you how this looks when it's dry. So once the clock was dry, I needed to paint the numbers on it. So here's my trick for laying out the numbers on a clock. I use something thin, like a skewer, to sort of mark the top and bottom, and the, you know, the three and the nine position, and then I just use tape to mark those spots on the tablecloth. And then I use more tape to measure out the in-between ones, because once you have all your spots measured out, it's much easier to add the numbers in exactly the right spot. Then I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to make the numbers, but I wanted to use this stencil. So I tried just painting over the stencil while it was wet and lifting it up, but the paint, it bled through the stencil too much. So instead, I just took the stencil, traced it with a pencil, and then filled in that sketched number with a paintbrush. And that worked much better. Now, whenever you're painting with white, it dries uh, more clear than you'd like. So I will need to add another layer of white paint over top of this once it's dried a little bit more to make the numbers sharper, but I'm really happy with how these are turning out. All right, let's see the finished piece. So here it is, all done. Well, technically not all done because I need to put another layer of white paint on these numbers because white paint, it's always hard to get it full coverage in one go, but look how cool that is. 
look how shiny those metallic layers are. You see as the light hits them, the blue and the gold really pops. And even though there is green where the colors have mixed, it is not super noticeable. Definitely the impression you get is blue and yellow. And I thought that white numbers and white clock hands would really stand out well against this instead of doing blue or yellow numbers. That way you can see clearly what time it is. So the back I haven't finished yet. There's this sort of green smear and I haven't signed it yet. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do to the back yet. I might paint it dark blue or I might just sign it and leave it as is. But either way, really cool. Very, very happy with this. Even though when it poured out, it got all blobby. It's really neat and I love it. Thank you guys for joining me for this acrylic pouring tutorial. I hope it inspired you to try something new. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever made a clock with a vinyl record? And if so, how did it go? I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Bye guys.